First of all, my good people, on behalf of Father Abbott and our nuns and monks in Coleman, I wish everyone a very happy new year and a prosperous new year and a safe new year. Right after Mass, instead of the Leonine prayers, we will bless the Epiphany chalk, which is, uh, the Epiphany is Friday, January the 6th. And, but I will bless it here and help yourselves to the chalk. The instructions for using it, in case you're not familiar, is on the second page of the, today's bulletin. Also, a couple of notes concerning our website. I know most of you have already visited it, but I recommend that you visit it from time to time because we're always adding to it and updating it. And although a lot of it seems at first glance to apply to monks and nuns, or prospective monks or nuns, it is also applicable, 99% of it, to everyday Catholics. Also, now, our Sunday Bulletin is available on the website, usually sometime Saturday, the Saturday before. You simply um, go to the Scriptorium button and click on our Sunday Bulletin. And some of them will be in color because some of the pictures we use are in color, but of course they're black and white and what you get here. And you can download them and print them or whatever. And also something new on our website is called Notes on the Spiritual Life or Daily Spiritual Notes. You simply click on that button and it has daily little spiritual instructions that you can take or leave as they fit you. Not everything on our website, not everything in our bulletin, not everything in any spiritual books, not everything in any given sermon is applicable to every individual, especially not equally. God leads everyone differently through his inspiration and what is good for one person and the next person may not get anything out of and vice versa. I know this is a brand new year and we all have hopes that this year will be better than last year but at the same time we also have doubts or reality checks that it probably will be as bad or worse than last year, especially weather-wise, and maybe even financially-wise, and health-wise. It's already started out with a bang, with everybody being sick, it seems. There's nobody here today. I know a lot of people are out due to sickness. But I know that there is a tendency, especially in today's times and uncertainties, to worry, to be overly concerned about what's going to happen, what's going to happen to me, my neighbor, my family, financially or physically or otherwise. But we must remember one thing in this coming new year. No matter how dark things become or how evil things seem to be around us, or how hopeless things may seem to be. We must remember and remind ourselves often two things. First of all, that our Lord is no further away than our own individual hearts. Any time of the day or night, it doesn't take but a couple of seconds to go into our hearts and fall on our knees in front of the good Lord and say, I love you or help me, or something simple to keep us in touch and remind us that he is there. And the second thing to remember is that God is in charge. 
It may not seem like it, and we may have our doubts, but we must know deep down that He is in charge, and He loves each one of us more than we love ourselves. He may let us wobble on the edge of the cliff for a long time. He may even let us fall off the edge of the cliff. But we must know that he will be down there at the bottom to catch us and to set us on our feet again and to help us on our way. And we must not question his reasoning. We must not ask why. He knows and that is enough. We must trust him enough to know that he knows what he's doing and what he is allowing to happen. And all the coming trials and tribulations that will face us in this new year, no matter what they may be, whether it's family or personal or the world in general, aches and pains and sickness, loss of loved ones, Instead of looking at them as crosses, as things that have to happen because these are my sins or because God's punishing me or something, no. Yes, they are crosses, but they're more than a cross. Let's look at them as gifts. Now that seems strange, I know. But whatever it is, God has at least allowed it to happen to us. Not that he may test us, no, but that may, he may draw us closer to him, that we have a gift get to give back to him. Whether it's loss of finances, or loss of health all of a sudden, or loss of a loved one all of a sudden, yes, it hurts. But we say, thank you, dear Lord, for this gift. I give it back to you. Help me. But help someone who needs it more than me. My good people, do we ever stop to think of the poor souls out there who have no one to help them, no one to pray for them, especially the poor children whose own parents don't even know they exist, basically. Even the good intention parents, they're so busy trying to make a living to keep shoes on their children and so forth. They don't have time for their children. They don't have time to give them love and encouragement. And so the kids are raised up by themselves. And where are they going to get what they need when they don't get it from their parents? We must pray for these people, these children. We must suffer for them, offer our suffering for them. That God will inspire them and help them and teach them in his own way. And one last point before I quit. We have a tendency, and it's among all of us, it's human nature, but it's much worse today, I think, than it's ever been and that is to judge, to judge others, even to judge God. Part of the problem is, first of all, we take things too personally. Something that an innocent person says, and they meant it innocently, but it came out wrong, or we heard it wrong, and we take it, oh, they're, they're evil, they meant that, they meant that to hurt me. And, but it, yet, if you approached them, they'd be shocked. I didn't mean it that way at all. Even in monasteries and convents, we get that all the time. There's a very wonderful cartoon I once saw. I was unable to get a copy of it. But it speaks volumes. It's simply all pictures. It was on the wall of a build, lumber company where we had some trusses made when we were building our church. And I had, was in the office to order the trusses we needed. And on the wall was this wonderful epistle. It showed two people talking on a telephone. The customer on the one side, and the man who builds the trusses on the other side. And in case anybody doesn't know what a truss is, it's the structure that holds up a roof on a house or a building. And it can be all kinds of shapes and sizes. 
Well, the customer had in his mind a picture of the truss that he wanted. And he was describing it to the man on the other side of the phone. And listening to the man, to the customer, the man was building a picture in his own mind of the truss that he thought the customer wanted. They could not have been more different than night and day. It was totally, the one was completely different from the other. And that's what happened with us. And we must remember that. That no matter how well we think we heard a person, did we really understand what they said or where they were coming from? If somebody says something to you that you really have a problem with, ask them, is this what you meant? In a gentle way, don't snap. And you may be surprised. Oh, I didn't mean that at all. This is what I meant. So when we find ourselves judging people, even actions, actions can be totally misinterpreted. And I've used this example before, but I'll use it again. Because they, some people that had to do with court system, the law system, they knew this was a problem with witnesses. So they took a real court case in a real courtroom where there were real people present. They didn't know what was going on. And a few people were asked to stage a certain situation in the courtroom. There was a trial going on, and a man walked in with a gun and started shooting. They videotaped the whole thing without anybody knowing about it. And then after it was all over, they asked the people in the courtroom, who were all there and all saw the same thing, to give a first-hand witness account of it. They all differed. And when they saw the video, they were astounded at what actually happened. Nobody got it right. We must remember that. That no matter how much we think this person is doing something horrible over here, we don't know the motive. We don't know what's in their heart. Let's leave it in God's hands. Let God do the judging. Now, if you will all kneel, I will give you a New Year's blessing. And may this blessing go home with you and remain with you forever. God bless you.